bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit up to $250, get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back, all from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Let's take a look at our top selections. For the- Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, kicking off the $1 pick six at Belmont Park on a stakes-laden Saturday card with race number six. Let's throw up the field for the grade three Bogay stakes. Phillies and Mares going a mile and a 16th on the inner turf. And Mike, only a field of six, but you have arguably two of the best Philly and Mare turf horses in the country. And the one Harvey's Little Goyle, the five Civil Union, both making their seasonal debuts. And you've got an intriguing European invader now with Chad Brown, the two Lamista. Yeah, they did pretty well for only getting six here, Dan. Three of these fillies um, ran in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf at the end of last year. The two, Lamista, uh, had a four-way running streak snap the last time we saw her over in Ireland. I mean, there's there's a lot going on in here. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for the grade three Bogay stakes. Platinum Painter is a speed horse. I think fans of Platinum Painter are going to be a little bit worried about the step up in class, but she's over uh, over uh, produced so far at big prices. Uh, she's likely to make the lead, and she's come a long way from when she was a 12,500 claimer at Parks 3 back. She really has. Her last two starts, both over at Aqueduct, are both really good, Dan, the two best races of her career, and she should be on the lead in here. We'll see how how loose she can get in this race, Dan, because it feels like the one, at least, um, Harvey's little girl is going to be able to keep up with her. And that her tactical speed gives Harvey's little Goyle a big advantage over a horse like Civil Union, who might want to go a little bit longer, and the European invader, who's likely to be held up near the back of the pack. Let's watch Harvey's little girl's excellent performance in the Philly and Mare Turf. First time against older horses, coming off the heels of a pace-pressing win in the Queen Elizabeth II Cup. She ran big this day, Mike. 102 buyer speed figure. Junior Alvarado has her running in the stretch. Uh, yeah, just another good performance from her. Um, I mean, I, I feel like this is the kind of race, Dan, where, you know, it feels like everybody was sort of getting involved late. Um, you know, you can see a bunch of horses making up ground. And Harvey's Little Goyle, I mean, it didn't ever look like she was going to win. But, man, did she make it close at the end. I thought it was another good performance for her. And I almost feel like coming back off the layoff, going a little bit shorter, could actually work for her. I mean, she's run fine going longer, obviously. But um, I don't mind her going a shorter distance at all. Number two is La Mista. This horse was a multiple group winner in Ireland last year. She won four in a row before disappointing a little bit last time out against Group 2 Company. She had proud, excellent off layoffs. This will be her first start in North America. I'm a little interested to see how she does on firmer turf. A lot of her big victories came soft, yielding, heavy ground. Yeah, I think that could be a concern, Dan. I mean, it's, I think it's also a little concerning maybe that the last time we saw her in that Blandford it feels like that was kind of the first really big test for her. I know she won a couple of group races, but that was a, a big test for her against a really good field. And she didn't run it all that day. There's been a layoff since then. I'll expect her to show up and run a, a decent race here. I'm just not sure how good she is. Chad also has the three, Nay Lady Nay, a mare that has been managed very well. She's won five of 10 lifetime starts. She was third in the Flower Bowl in a good effort two starts back. I was likely just overmatched in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. She's another mare with good tactical speed, and she can work out any kind of trip. Yeah, I think she's really interested in this race. I actually, I know that she ran well in the Flower Bowl too back then. I feel like going shorter might actually work for her. Um, in the Breeders' Cup, they just took her back to last. I didn't think she had any chance at all in that race. Um, but her flower ball was good. Her All of her stakes races prior to that were good. This shorter distance, I think, could really work for her. She could be a fair price in this race. I think there's a lot to like about this horse. Here's the expected pace setter, the four platinum painter in her most recent race at Aqueduct, her first start as a five-year-old. This is the plenty of gray stakes. I need her here, Mike. She's 21 to one. She's on the lead, and she's going to get run down by who else? Chad Brown at three to five. Yeah, she did her best in this race, got control of the pace, very game through the stretch here. The three to five favorite, which just too good for her at the end. Uh, I really respect her recent form, Dan. I know that she can make the lead in this race. The problem is, as well as she's running her last two starts, she couldn't get it done against, listen, against good horses. But the waters are just going to keep getting deeper for her as, the, as time goes on. And I just wonder how many more of those she has in her. 
Is the distance too short for civil union? That's one question. Is Shug McGahee using this race as a prep for something longer? That's another fair question because civil union got good when really stretched out to longer distances last year, winning the Flower Bowl at a mile and a quarter at Belmont. We watched the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf before. Harvey's Little Goyle ran third. Civil Union was sort of far back early. I thought she got checked and lost some momentum on the second turn. She ran on at the end of that race. I think she's a really nice mare. I think you have to be concerned, though, about the distance. Uh, yeah, that would be my big concern. I think she's really good, too. And she obviously just kept getting better with racing last year. But, I mean, you could just see it in all of those races, Dan, when they brought her back last summer. Um, she just really stays in her races. Longer distances really work for her. I just kind of looked at this race and felt like they were just uh, getting her going here. Thankful is a stakes winner on dirt. She's only raced once on turf in her career. It was her career debut. I just wonder if Todd's taking a chance here with Thankful to try to get some graded black type. And I wonder if Louis Saez is going to try to get really aggressive and maybe try to grab the lead. Yeah, that's interesting. It'll be, we'll see how they decide to ride her and then we'll just see what she does, Dan. Um, She's just hard to take because I didn't even think her career debut was that bad. She didn't get a great trip in that race and ran a little bit. Um, but they're switching back now off of two really, really poor performances on the dirt. Let's take a look at our top pick for the grade three bogey. We're kicking off the dollar pick six at Belmont Park on Saturday. You're going with Harvey's Little Goyle. The distance and her tactical speed give her an edge over Civil Union. I'm just a big fan of Civil Union. I have a feeling she's going to be running on strongly in the stretch. Maybe this distance a bit short. Yeah, that was what concerned me about her. She's really good, though. I, I took Harvey's little girl. I think she might just be the best horse, Dan, and I don't mind her cutting back. I Listen, I almost put Nay Lady Nay on top. I think that horse has a real chance as well. And she'll offer a price in here with three other alternatives likely to take more money. One, three, two, five for Mike. Five, one, three, four for me in the grade three bogey at Belmont on Saturday. Good luck.